So, after all this preparation, we can finally get to the real baking. I'm going to collapse the UVs down just to make sure that they're all set. Unhide the non-unique parts. And then I'm going to unhide all the high poly parts. Now, just to say clearly, this DVD is going to be about fixing things. Because, honestly, with all the complex things involved, involved with baking, there are going to be errors. And there are going to be a ton of it. And that's where we're going to do this first bake, just to see what sort of really bad errors there are fix them, and then start going towards our final bake here. So just in hiding all of these parts here, all the high-poly things we need, not the tracks, because those are an entirely separate thing. They require a special case, and you'll see that in the next video. They won't be very hard either. It's the body that's going to give us problems. So we've got our uh, re render to texture window here, which we open by hitting zero. Pick a normals map, set the resolution to 4096. And I might go a little bit lower just for the test one because the errors are going to be so glaring and so bad that I don't really need a um, large resolution for that. Because 4000 by 2000 really takes a pretty long while to render. I mean, it's not to be underestimated. So you're better off um, following the resolution. It takes a lot uh, less time to render. So turn on projection mapping. Then um, that looks about okay. I'm not going to turn on super sampling yet. Don't really need it. And then just show all these parts and add them so there we go boom it's added a cage and this looks like a terrible mess I'm just gonna have to clean it up hit reset and push it out slightly now the cage is the direction that the low poly um, faces will search for high poly normals in and this cage is what we're going to be tweaking a lot next to some other things but the cage is one of the most difficult things to control so for now we're just going to go with these default settings hit render see what we get and there we are this is what we're getting and obviously the one that max shows you is not what you really need so we're going to load up a shader and this thing the zolio shader is uh, something i've written myself you can get this online there will be a link with a dvd and you can use it to preview normal maps in real time so i just load up the normal map assign it and the moment of truth we're going to see what it looks like and immediately there's something very wrong with these windows here um it's probably because they just completely missed their their target. I don't think they have the correct uh, ID. If you see these these sort of really weird things, it's probably because the material IDs are not matched up. It's just projecting into the void and it's hitting some normals in the distance behind it. So these things, let's see, they're set to group one over there. And this thing was also missed. As you can see, I just pretty much forgot to set the group on this one. So we're just going to do that as well. And I think those bottom ones might also have been missed. I think these were, um, were set to blue. Just going to double check that. So collapse these. That's still not completely correct. So just trying to match up the IDs on everything. The ones with the mismatched IDs are the most obvious ones. I mean, obviously, it just completely doesn't line up. And let's see, I'm just trying to hide some parts to better see what the exact problem is. I'm just going to attach those windows because it's it's a little bit easier. They're in the same mesh. Because right now the high poly windows are separate planes, uh, and I think that's why I missed them. So attach, just attach them to the same part. And hit attach. Just keep attaching them to all these windows. Um, doesn't really matter that much. So go over every single one of them, attach the window. That's sort of the danger with having some of these parts be really simple. Yeah, and those are instances, so I don't really need to attach that one. And this one should be okay as well, so we can delete that. All right, there we are. Now, Go back to the low poly body. I can see a few more problems here. There's some sort of weird thing here, which is probably because the cage has been acting weird. So that thing doesn't really work well. So we're just going to connect those. If you get these weirdly shaped quads, even if they're quads, it might pay off to just split them up into tries to okay, solve those problems. Another cause for this might also have been uh, split vertices, like two vertices in the position of one. Same here, we need to connect these things up. 
I mean, it happens. You try to pay attention to creating all quads and tries, but you just forget it. Also, there's no underside to the bulldozer. I remember um, thinking about doing this later on, but apparently I forgot for the test bake. So anyway, we still have the chance to fix this now. It's not really a problem. So create this, not in a hidden layer. I'm just gonna grab that and flip the normals. There we go. And then drag this part down just so we can cover that up. So it doesn't really give any um, strange issues the baking so attach it and move them out a little bit so they, so they make sure that there's no missed area and the chassis is just all purely material id one except for those extra parts so that should be good let's look for some more problems i've got a slight missed area here always start by checking if there are no double vertices that's one of the most important ones and this one well this is a, pr a pretty bad um, case of forgetting to turn this into quads, and you can see what happens here. So I'm just selecting these things and making sure we turn them into all tries. The cage just doesn't like this sort of thing. You can fix it manually, but the automatic cage and the automatic pushing of a cage does not like that sort of thing. And quite a few extra things. Like you can see here, we obviously forgot some of these slats, so we're just going to have to select all of them like that, and then set the ID to the correct number so we shouldn't miss them. Right here we have a, a strangely different kind of problem. Um, it looks like the high poly position is actually offset from the low poly position. For some reason this is moved out, so we're just going to move that back in, try and match it as close as possible. These things were sitting a bit too high, so rays were missing. They're sticking out a bit too much, so we're going to move them in. And we're going to select some of these parts and just squash them down. Uh, you change the normals a little bit with that, but it's it's so vague that it doesn't really matter that much. Now this part here seems to have missed a lot of rays also. I'm trying to find out why that is. And let's see. It looks like... Let's see, the idea is set to 1. Try and weld all the vertices, which might be a problem also. Check the high poly. Set to red. Might be because the one on the wrong side was baked. These things are also sticking out a bit too much, so we're just going to move them in a little bit, squash them. Same for these things. These really, I should have really known that we're going to do that, but um, here's our chance to fix them anyway. So let's see if we have any other serious problems. Move these out a little bit. Can't really have them stick over the edge because that's going to give problems. And that looks about right. Then right here, it's also looking okay, but we have our piece here that seems to be overlapping a bit. And we're going to have to fix that overlap. So we're going to have to actually change the UVs a little bit. And I can't really work with this. Uh, this sort of ratio, so that's when I'm going to have to change it. And once that's done, I'm getting a, some more oversight to be able to work with. So uh, some slight negligence here. Just simply forgot about these parts. Trying to move it out. Trying to fit it really tightly so they don't overlap anymore. And we're just going to squash that down a little bit because it's not such an important part. So we can just squash it. It's only like, a, I don't know, 25% squash. This thing was sticking out too much. So I'm going to scale it, obviously making sure edge constraints are not on. Same on this side, move it in, squash it a bit. Like that, that should give me a lot less problems. Go. And this place is also a bit problematic. Let's see things sticking out a bit too much also. We're going to do the same trick, squash it, move it down. Bottom is okay. Now these uh, these holes in here, the problem is that the low poly doesn't actually have the holes, so it's missing rays because the green thing behind it is not hit by um, the, uh, because it has a different material ID, so it's just skipping it, and the holes in there are treated as projecting into the void. So we're going to fix that by 
putting a separate plane in there with uh, the correct material ID, so nothing too difficult. So just going to extrude this part here so we cover the bottom area there. And then attach it to the high poly. Attach, making sure it has the correct material ID. And oops, we missed a little spot there. And so instead of bothering with um, like actually adding edges there, I'm just going to detach them to an element. Okay, so I've done it for the other uh, racks as well. Not really showing that since it's the same thing that we just repeat. There's another problem here. It's a missed ray. I'm thinking it might be probably because the high poly doesn't completely match up with the low poly. So I'm just going to move both of them out a little bit. That looks about right. This should match up slightly more. And since we've lost our symmetry, I have to be really careful not to do it on one side only. Try and get it to look the same on both sides. There we are. Okay, then these parts, you ray misses here because the size is slightly different. So I'm just going to scale these out a bit. And it should match up when we do something like this. Not too sure why the scale is so different, but it shouldn't be too hard to fix anyway. And it's easier to use the uh, actual scale spinner to match this up. Now, that part is still slightly different. Maybe we'll go in and tweak that a bit. Yeah, so I'd prefer to actually move these things around manually. There we go, that should match up a lot better. Not just pure uniform scaling, but actually manually trying to get it to match. And that should be good to go for this part here. Now, I think I've shown you a lot of the common baking errors that you can fix. I had a few more. We're not showing all of them. If you have a few of these, just look at the video again. And in the next one, we'll be going for our final bake.